Okay, so here's the box. And a lot more compact than I thought it would be. There's a keyboard. As you can see, it's a standard QWERTY with the extra controls. I have a special uh, marking for the on-off switch there. That's about that size that I thought it would be. You know, bigger than I'd want it to be, but uh, not totally huge. Then we get down to the guts of the box. Have the uh, manual there. I guess it's a little welcome letter. There you go. You're minutes away from a whole new way of watching TV, of controlling TV, or thinking about what can t TV can be. That's the setup guide. And here is the unit itself. I'm going to uh, pull it out here to bust open the plastic here. Oh, wait a minute. It comes off here. All right. And that's it. Take off the protective plastic, plastic for what it's worth. And as you can see, it's got uh, the logo there in kind of a relief. You have three infrared controls. You have some ventilation on the side. And there you have the uh, back controls. You have HDMI in, HDMI out, the SPDIF interface for a non-HDMI digital uh, output, your uh, power slot, uh, your normal Ethernet connection for your internet uh, if you decide not to use the wireless two USB ports and these two are called IR blasters, infrared blasters apparently since the infrared is line of sight and uh, knowing that you're going to be putting this in parallel with uh, other components they have some extenders out there to uh, allow the infrared signal to reach some of the other units that uh, this uh, Logitech review can control. And there's the uh, on off button over there. So that's the unit itself. And in this box here, we have the uh, included HDMI cable. We have a power cord, and that's it. So we have uh, completed the unboxing. I have uh, connected all the cables. I connected the HDMI input from the uh, cable box. This is a cable vision box into the Logitech Review. Uh, Logitech Review now goes out to the television. It turns out in the packaging there was one IR blaster. And if you look to the upper right of this frame, you'll see it sitting there on top of the uh, little cabinet that we have for our um, multimedia components here. So I've aimed that at the infrared controller for the television and uh, I'm hoping that the Logitech will be able to communicate with the uh, cable box below it. I've kind of pulled it out such that the IR port should be able to uh, hit the sensor on the cable vision box. Um, when you power everything up as they recommend in the user guide then the next thing you get is something on your television screen. They advise you not to turn on your controller until you get to this point. So now we're at the point where we can turn on the keyboard controller. By the way, the keyboard came with the batteries in it, uh, which is nice. Not only were the batteries included, but uh, they actually were in the right place. So we're going to uh, push on the OK button. Oh, I see. Have to uh, turn on the power here first. Always helps. And you do get a little green light indicator there. 
indicating the powers available. And we're going to hit the OK button and see what happens. Okay, so you start getting kind of menuish sort of things telling you how to use it. Next. Getting started. Takes about 20 minutes. We're not going to walk you through the whole installation. So we got through the uh, basic setup of uh, getting the configuration for the screen calibrated and now it has downloaded uh, new software uh, since that there was an update already available so we downloaded that and we're just waiting for Google TV to warm up here okay so apparently it's uh, going through some sort of boot sequence That's nice. Okay, so this is Google TV, and this is what it looks like pretty much when you bring it up. Uh, on the left is your menu, and you can arrange these items in any order you want using the edit control in the lower left-hand corner there. And I put bookmarks up on top just so that it would be a little bit easier for me to get to the things I want. Uh, but I can go down to uh, queue, where I can queue up uh, video podcasts and audio podcasts if I want. Um, I can see a television guide of what's on television. Uh, this is basically a channel guide to uh, my cable television service. I have applications that I can uh, use, including gallery, which allows me to uh, see my photos from my phone that I've been taking or anywhere else that I've loaded up into Picasa. Um, as I'm using the service, it keeps track of what I'm looking at and uh, allows me to go back to things in my most visited list. And uh, Amazon Video On Demand is available too if I want to go buy some movies. And Spotlight is available also, which is kind of their promotional channel where you can learn about some of the uh, partner uh, programs that they're trying to push there too. I'm going to go back to bookmarks there so you can get an idea as to how things work. If I click on live TV, it'll go over to um, some, whatever's already playing on my television. And I can use the keyboard of the uh, Google TV control to control things just as I would normally on my television programming. If I click the home button on my Google TV, I go back here. And instead of doing things like that, I can go look at YouTube. Now when you click on YouTube on the bookmarks menu, what you get is actually YouTube lean back. And if you want, you can look at the default uh, videos that are playing on lean back by simply and going down like that. Very, very or I can go over to videos that, that are being queued up in my feed. As you can see, it's a whole different experience once you uh, begin to have these, this sort of programming available for you on the big screen. It uh, can create a whole different situation. To give you a flavor as to how Google uh, TV changes YouTube, for the sake of argument, let's go out there and look for one of my favorite series, Earth Touch, and look only for HD videos. And that's going to bring up a search that is, uh, you know, pretty well refined. And as you can see, this is all nature videos. If I click on the first one, that's going to pull it up. And it'll go in directly into high quality HD video that's playing off of YouTube. And it'll just go through these series one after the other. So you can have a nice evening of uh, entertainment just using uh, the search feature on Leanback. Uh, and get a lot of excellent programming on YouTube if you know what you're looking for. It does take a little bit of uh, discipline to be able to find those things. Now, there are other things that we can be looking at. We could, if we wanted, we could go out there and play Pandora, which is a music service, and um, have that play music through uh, your speakers. And if you're like some other people, I have some high fidelity speakers and it sounds really good once um, I start listening to that music coming through my speakers. 
and you can mute the music once you uh, decide to go back out into normal things on uh, the service there. Uh, you can also play with Twitter, and that looks pretty much like what you think it is. If you have a Netflix subscription, you can go out there, and it'll bring up whatever movies that you have queued in the service. And uh, you can go out there and start playing those whenever you're ready to uh, start watching them. So I have this movie queued up, and uh, if I want to, I can look at it. Although the, it is not a partner that allows searching through the uh, common interface that's available on, you, on uh, Google TV. Now, if I decide for the sake of argument, if uh, I want to be looking for something that uh, I'm not quite sure where it is, if I'm on the main menu there, all I have to do is hit the search button, and for the sake of argument, let's uh, see what happens when it says The Simpsons. And as you can see, it pulls up a, a menu of uh, searching for TV and web video for uh, content relating to The Simpsons, or it has some very specific things out there that we could look at, including Wikipedia, uh, or I could go out there and complete a web search on it. If we just take a look at what's available on Search TV and Web Video, that's going to pull up um, some of the programming that's available out there. We could uh, subscribe to the series The Simpsons if we want and uh, get it queued up. And if we wanted to, uh, we could go out there for the sake of argument and we could subscribe to this feed and uh, watch content from The Simpsons as it was uh, produced. Uh, we can also, as you see, uh, do that another way. It says on the left there, add series to queue. So the queue function we saw earlier can also queue up our regular uh, television broadcast programming if that's what you're interested in or any sort of television series uh, that you're familiar with from uh, regular TV. Um, you may notice that the uh, television program that we had on the live TV is uh, playing in the background as well. So um, that's... And uh, as you saw, we can also go out there and buy uh, content from Amazon if we wanted to get a more premium movie. Um, Q is kind of fun. It, um, it works basically like an RSS feed. You can queue up individual videos and watch them as they peel off. Uh, I've been enjoy enjoying watching TED Talks, Dilbert cartoons, and other stuff that you're just not normally going to find on uh, broadcast television. And uh, truthfully, I haven't watched much broadcast television since we got this. Uh, applications, uh, I'll give you a quick look at gallery, it looks pretty much like it would on an Android telephone as you can see. So, you know, if you went out there to a conference or something and you wanted to show people uh, pictures that you took while you're at the conference, that's really easy to do wherever you happen to have gone. Um, and as you can see, I'm fl flipping through this stuff pretty quickly. It's really easy to navigate through these things. And uh, the most visited is kind of handy. I'll discuss in the weblog some of the limitations, but hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the strengths of Google TV.